everybody, welcome back to Supernatural Eye. I'm your main host, Francesca Garcia, better known as Supernatural Eye. Um, I'm very excited. I can't believe we're halfway through episode five um, in the mile mark here. We're going to be discussing the very haunted uh, Ortona Cemetery. Um, and yeah, it's just crazy how we're already here. And I just feel like we just started the season. But anyways, this episode's going to be very excited because it's going to talk about the native grounds of Florida um, and all a much involvement about Indian burial grounds and of course very haunted cemeteries so you can't go wrong with that and that perfect brewery of haunting uh, recipes but anywho uh, Mike Del Coro Mike Del Coro Jesus excuse me later on we'll be interviewing our team member badass teammate Richie Sharp that's right Mr. Richie um, better known as Skunk Ape Paranormal and um, yeah it's gonna get very exciting here so stay tuned for Sadly, Stephanie, which is which is why I couldn't make it on the show for um, later on post interview segment. Uh, however, we will have Miss Stephanie on in another time um, because we um, had them come to Virginia City for PX, and it was just such an epic trick. So I'm pretty sure we'll have them on for a later season. So both them together. So get ready for that. Um, but anyways. What we'll be discussing first is the history, uh, a little bit of Ortona, and then we'll get to the nitty gritty, which is as far as the investigation. And then later on, stay tuned for the post interview segment with Mike Del Coro and Rich. So yeah, Ortona is pretty much located like in the middle of Florida, kind of by Lake Okeechobee area. And um, it's, it's a wild cemetery. I mean, it pretty much, from my understanding, if you're looking at this map of the um, Indian burial grounds um, you can see like facing the map on the left hand side um, kind of cuts off where the cemetery would be at so like that half crescent shape um, kind of thing or whatever you see there on the left hand side like that was what's dug out of there um, to be converted to a cemetery so I'm sure that kind of pissed off a lot of you know Native Americans during its time um, and they go back to like around the AD days, like AD 1200 to like 1650, I believe they protected that area. Um, and when we visit the mounds in the back, because of course the mounds are like right behind the cemetery, I would say that whole area is pretty, I mean, on top of, you know, burying the dead as well, is pretty active. And I'll explain more about our captures and what we discovered there, but I'm going to read a little bit of, you know, when I went to the mounds, some of the posts that were on the boards. Um, so anyways, archaeological investigation, investigations indicate that Ortona site was inhabited uh, at least as early as the late Archaic, uh, if I'm saying that right, historians correct me, <laughs> period, about 3,000 years before present. At the time, people lived along Turkey Creek, which offered food and transportation. They might have built elevated mounds and ridges along the waterways. Um, such artificial elevations might have provided high dry platforms for houses, especially during the rainy periods when rising water tables inundated, bear with me, <laughs> inundated most of the low-lying flat prairies. It is what is known today as Glade County. The later inhabitants of Ortona constructed even higher mounds. Uh, their earth moving activities expanded outward from Turkey Creek to encompass a much wider area. By AD 1200, uh, Ortona's people used sand to build large ridge like earthworks um, and build huge temples, mound reaching 22 feet in height, creating the highest elevation in Glade County. Native Americans continued to live at Ortona um, and to Pro, proto historic times around AD 1500 to 1650. Um, so that's a little bit of some type of history. Now they believe that it could be all linked into the Calusas by just the bulls and the canoes, like the similar structures of what they used. Um, before they weren't sure what tribe originated in Ortona, um, just some indigenous tribe. But definitely they seem some type of similar similarities of what the Calusas. Um, Calusas are actually by my area in southwest Florida, Collier County, like Lee County, like McRogue County, um, all southwest Florida in reality, that's where the Calusas inhabited. Um, so they say maybe by history, I think due to, I, I wasn't sure if it was like the Seminole War at the time that they kind of all clustered in the center or it was due to the conquistadors, or again, historians mark my 
my, you know, misinformation, if that is incorrect, but I know that they kind of like migrated, or rumor has it, they migrated to the center of the of, I said United States, of Florida, um, by Lake Okeechobee, where Ortoda is currently at. So there has been some links or connections to the Calusas, and they're not sure that's the originated tribe. They don't think it is. Um, but the, uh, the tribal identify as Ortona, Native Americans is unclear, as what the as what I just described. Uh, they might have been the Calusas or close relatives to them, possibly through kindship or other political and social relations. And Ortona's inhabitants uh, would have easy access to the Gulf Coast, which is about my area, um, by way of the Calusahatchee River. So anyways, those are some fun facts about the Ortona uh, tribes and, and everything in that area. So um, you can see how active the place can be. Um, now, during my time, I was there. Uh, Rich was obviously there. Eric was there. Myself, Scotty, Nicole, Zap. That was actually the first time I met Zap and Nicole, which is awesome because Zap is our founder of War Party Paranormal. Um, so it was such an honor to meet him that night. I was very intimidated too because I'm like, holy crap, I hope he likes me. Um, and I think I was like fairly new on the ch on the team. So that was very exciting. Um, and at the time, not that I'm trying to, you know, put anybody down or bring bad vibes, but, um, there was a girl who I thought was my friend at the time that was trying to get on the team. But, um, I don't, I definitely believe I, I'll have to be very honest with you that night. It wasn't very active. I would have to say, and I was kind of disappointed because I heard so much about Ortona and a lot of people report all these shadow figures. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but at least I still to this day have not had that experience. Um, I have investigated Ortona twice, actually, and my second time was more active than my first time, which I'll be discussing on this show, uh, my first time experience. And I definitely think um, in the case of why that happened is the energy and the people you're surrounding yourself with. So if you're surrounding yourself with negative people, then... Um, sometimes I believe the other side kind of picks up on that. So I just think the energy I was around with was a little too much, in other words, and it maybe kind of ruined some discoveries of what we could have captured. Um, we did have, and we'll get to that actually in a second, but anyhow, this girl that was with us was on there, and um, Marie and Earl actually were there, and I love Marie love, love, love Marie. She's probably one of my favorite characters on the team. Uh, that was my first time meeting, uh, Marie, I want to say the names together, Marie and Earl. Um, very cool, very sweet couple. And I met other North team members as well on that, um, investigation. Stephanie, I don't think was there. Um, I did meet Stephanie later on. I believe it was another Gulf Gold Coast, uh, investigation if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe it was yesteryear. Correct me, Stephanie. But anyways, um, Rich was for sure there, and that was probably one of the first nights I started to get to know Rich, and Rich was interested in joining the team, and I think he was on trial that night. So join, uh, actually, fun fact, Rich joined the team right after I did. So uh, I think that he was on trial during this time. But anyways, Rich was awesome. He he killed it. I think he had his own like little spirit box, too, at the time that he was showing off. Um, but we're going to talk about the spirit box here in a second because we did have a really good session with that, and that's probably the only piece of evidence I can really provide to you guys um, because again, it wasn't a very active night per se. Also, let me just say, um, I am not the best historian. I really try for the show. <laughs> um, anybody on our team, big shout out to Joe. He is so great about the history of things. Um, so by all means, if there's something I have said incorrectly on the show, by, by all means, I'm not perfect. Correct me. I just try to go by my research and do what I can do. Um, I've caught myself on other shows or episodes on here that cringe, but um, I think there was one, and I'll admit it was the Chicago one, that I said cheeseburger, which, I mean, I should have said cheeseburger, but I said the wrong one. I think I said water burger. Well, I was thinking water burger. Don't get me wrong. But anyways, that was just a perfect example. <laughs> Correct me. I'm not the best historian. I will admit that. I'm a good investigator, just not a good historian. But history is very important to investigations in the paranormal world, so it's good to get your facts straight. Um, but anyways, we're all learning here. So the point is, yes, that's what I've, I've discovered for Ortona. Um, and moving on for our captures, um, mm -hmm. we captured a very, very good portal session. 
um, with Nicole and Scotty. This was actually Nicole's portal box and she was just gifted this by Zap, our founder. It was super cute. Due to her insane portal box uh, activity session, I actually was inspired to get my own and my poor little box has been ripping it hard too. And that will be in other future episodes going down the line. But anyways, um, I want to show you this awesome clip of Portal Session. This is honestly the only piece of evidence I've captured. Um, the guys on their shows have captured much better evidence and every other teammate as well. And War Party has captured really good evidence of Ortona. Just, uh, you know, my second time, I can't really talk much about it. Um, but I definitely, Ortona changed my mind for the second time. At first I was hating on Ortona, like, oh, this is not that great, whatever. It's cool, the history's great, um, but I didn't get an activity. I'm not gonna lie, still to this day I haven't seen a shadow figure, which I'm dying to see. Um, but everybody talks about, like, I've seen these shadow figures, I've seen this, so, um, second time definitely was better for me. But anyways, I can't really talk about my second time on here, but the first time um, I will discuss, and this is the video clip of our portal session, so go ahead and check it out. Very creepy. And yeah, check it out. You know, we were in the, we were in the, we were in the dining car at Gold Coast, and we kept on getting E, E, E. What are you trying to tell us? <laughs> what if we don't get out? That's a form of being different from what we were hearing over there. What were you hearing over there? Didn't that actually sound like we were listening to shit that was happening in hell? Hell? That's the only best way I can explain it. They were all up here put in. You heard like somebody was walking. Slamming doors, <laughs> screaming. As, you know, the doors are slamming, they're screaming. Well, it sounds like doors slamming. Door slamming. Slamming. Yeah. slamming. That just did it. It just sounded like doors slamming. So sadly, yeah, again, that's all I can show you, but go ahead if you want to see better clips. Um, it's on the Haunted Files. I know Mike and Eric created an episode based on Artona and their evidence captured was amazing. Very, very cool. Scotty was on that episode, which is our co-founder. She's queen. We have some badass females on our team, just minding you, like really, really strong empowerment females. Um, so very cool session. Very cool. 
Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the Ortona episode. Before we pass this on to Mike Del Coro, uh, he'll be interviewing Rich and his experience of what we captured that night. I definitely want to say tune in to Monday's War Party radio show on KGRA Radio Network. Um, War Party is still doing the thing. Again, Mike and, and, and Eric are killing it as host and co-host. And also go ahead and check out The Haunted Files sponsored by Paraflix. That's right. Go ahead and subscribe to Paraflix. If you haven't already, you don't know what you're waiting for, go ahead and do it because it's awesome. Your girl here time to time will be on some episodes, not all of them. Um, but sometimes I get invited to them, so go ahead and check that out. And the guys are killing the game with their episodes. It's really awesome. Um, and then you'll other, you'll see also other War Party members on there as well. So go ahead and check that out. Um, subscribe to anything with War Party related. Um, check out our website. We have every upcoming events that have been selling out. Thank you guys so much for that. By the way, you guys are amazing as and, and amazingness to hear this amazingness and you're keeping us alive our spirits alive so again thank you guys for all your um, unconditional love and support really i can't thank you enough thank you for these sold out events because it does raise money we don't take any money for it um, it's all non-profit and it all goes to these historical societies that we're trying to restore um, that we held events for and and they've been so proud of what we've been doing so go ahead and continue to support because it's all about preserving the historical societies and, and, and these places that get knocked down by hungry developers um, so go ahead and check that out and just continue to support um, go ahead and stay tuned for the next episode of Supernatural Eye because that's going to be completely badass. Um, kind of giving you a hint here. I was actually wearing the same sweater. It's kind of cold at my house right now. I mean, that's hot outside in Florida, but I wore this sweater at the next location and it is probably by far my favorite location and creepiest location I've ever investigated, um, including my out-of-state investigations, I will have to say hands down. And the far creepiest. I don't think I would spend the night by myself out there. But anyways, I'm not going to drop any more hints. Just stay tuned for the upcoming trailer of that. Yeah. I'm weird. I'm just excited for you on the next one. Um, but stay tuned. Anyways, I'm going to pass this on to Mike Del Coro for the post-interview segment. He will be interviewing Richie. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys. So thank you again for watching Supernatural Eye. You guys are awesome. And stay tuned for the next episode. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Mike Del Coro. And uh, we're here at the Supernatural Eye show. And this is the post-interview segment. I'm here with my good buddy, Rich. He's part of War Party Paranormal. And we just got a couple of questions and stuff, a couple of things we're going to go over for Franny's episode here on the, uh, Ortona Cemetery. And how are we doing, Rich? What's good, happening? good. Thanks for good. letting me be here. Yeah, man. Thanks for, for being here. Um, so just a couple of questions, you know, relating to uh, Franny and uh, one of some of the first times that she met you guys, you and your and your wife there. So how did you guys meet? How did you meet Franny? I believe... The first time was at the uh, Gold Coast, maybe. Okay, um, is how I remember it. But um, very, very yeah. cool. Like, what, I know I've you... hunted at uh, Ortona with her as well. Did you like? What was your first impression of of Franny? I, I uh, it was just like meeting a TV personality. All I've seen <laughs> her was on. Uh, it was on you know, YouTube. Uh, YouTube? And, 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 instagram and facebook and things so cool yeah uh like when you guys were investigating what so this is for you like when you were in, investigating with her what kind of equipment do you use like what kind of equipment did you have so, in uh, my cat's jumping up there but uh <laughs> i got uh the dr60 of course which is uh main recorder um Use some rim pods or mel meter, uh, spirit boxes, your your ghost portal, um, and and uh, always like seeing the the Delco experiment for sure. Thank you, I appreciate uh, that. That's awesome. So, how how long ago do you remember how long ago it was when you investigated Ortona with her? Probably, I mean, less than a less than a year. I mean, six months maybe. I somewhere, can't remember when that. Somewhere trip around was. there, yeah. 
it kind of all blends into one, right? It, it, it <laughs> does. It does. I also had the opportunity to investigate with her and Eric at um, Virginia City for that PEX. Yeah, that's right. So that was that was awesome. That was cool. I, yeah, I wish I would have went. That was that looked like a great time. Um, so how did you become interested in investigating the paranormal? Like, how did that? Everybody has their own unique way and everything, right? So like. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so it was something I was always interested in. Um, you know, I always used to buy books and and uh, watch the television shows. And of course, you know, I I grew up with Ghostbusters. So yeah. Who didn't want to be a Ghostbuster? Right. Right. Um, and then I haven't been doing it too long, you know, two or three years. But at some point, I went and just bought some equipment, and then. Um, I saw the first place I investigated was Ortona um, because I, I um, hit war party up on, on Facebook and they said, you know, sure, come on out. So I had bought my equipment and then found a place to go, you know, go use it. Yeah. Like in, in that Ortona, do you remember anything like what side or what areas were kind of more active than the other? Or did you pick up anything that really stood out there at that, uh, at that cemetery? So the, the first time I went, um, uh, you know, not rookie, never been before and everything. Um, so I do remember the strangest thing was, um, two times out there, you know, I thought Stephanie was like, right beside me because i i felt you know how you like feel someone looking at you mm -hmm, or, uh, mm -hmm. like when you're putting in your pin number on your debit card someone's just too close. yeah exactly you know what you I mean? feel, yeah exactly so and twice i had that happen out at ortona that first night i don't know whether it was just me a rookie but you know i was like hey stephanie and then she's like yeah and was you know somewhere else i was like oh that's weird and it happened twice and um I don't know. I thought that was very strange. Yeah, that's like one there. of those personal uh, experiences that you you get to uh, experience, you know. And that yeah. that place is is known for for shadow figures, disembodied voices. I mean, that place is is very active. Um, did you ever experience anything like growing up that got you into the paranormal or anything like that, or like in your personal life, anything paranormal? So, probably I was probably mid twenties. Yeah, because it was after I got out of the Navy. But um, I lived with some some buddies in this house. And I thought I saw an apparition, you know, like I, a ghost. I was like, oh, but, you know, you're kind of half asleep, half awake. Um, yeah. You know, in those days, I was young, too. So, I, you know. Um, and then I asked my buddies, they're like, yeah, I saw that, too. And then also... I ran into a couple more people that had lived in that same in that same place. That it was a house, but split up in apartments, and they were like, "Yeah, that place is haunted." We left there. Oh wow! So, so that kind of validates. Time, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's wild. That's that's awesome. Actually, I, I you know, uh, but yeah, I was kind ahead. of half half asleep, half a you know what I mean. It's like that's always that when it happens, or, right? It's like in your peripherals or something, or very very like when you're just waking up or super tired or in your peripherals where people sometimes you might start to second guess yourself. Like, did I really see that? You know, but yep. then when you have other people that can say, I saw that too, or, Hey, you know, I witnessed that in that same area where it gives you that validation. That's, that's, that's when it's really like mind blowing. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, would you say that um, one of the most memorable uh paranormal things at the at ortona like did you get any crazy evps or anything like that or any actual evidence on on any equipment yeah so i definitely got some recordings um on the st 25 25 or 25 mm -hmm. yep and and the dr60 um my recorder well, you know, or but my recorder picks up. It seems like it feels like a lot of screams. A lot of times, it's a lot. Um, definitely not like Class A uh, EVPs, but I got those out there um, in a couple different places. I know when I was with Franny and Eric, um, 
can't remember the site we were at, but um, you know, he got he got names and things um on that recorder. Um yeah, it can that place, man. It's it's really hey, what's up, Katie? <laughs> that place is really can can be wild. I mean, we've we've had people come out with us that have never been on an investigation or ghost hunting and reported seeing shadow figures and stuff out there. It's wild. Excuse me if I'm looking down, it's got some yeah, notes no. here. Um, um so, some friends we took out there, um, they they did hear with their own ears a, a scream like it came up. Like one heard it in their, uh, you know, right ear, and the other in the left ear, and heard like a scream, just just out in the open, distant, yeah, just yeah, out like in the a disab- open. disembodied voice. In that, in that while I we've actually captured a couple out there on camera, uh, disembodied voices, and there's not like I, if you're unfamiliar with this place, I mean, it is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. There's no homes around there. There's no businesses. I would say, you know, the closest thing nearby is across the street, kind of catty corner. There's a, like some kind of a um, sulfur mine or something there. And uh, that's that's about it. But uh, for a voice to be coming out of that cemetery, I mean, there, there's yeah. there's no explanation for that. And even like when we did capture one uh, one time, we had our thermals with us. So we did a sweep of the area to see if there was any human beings like out there, like screwing around. Nothing, nothing. Oh, wow. So pretty yeah. pretty wild how how was the bugs out there the night do you remember the, like the mosquitoes i have put mosquito spray on why <laughs> yeah. they can get pretty they can get pretty nasty out there that's for sure yeah. um did you guys ever uh did you know that there was like an ancient indian burial ground there no i, I never even heard of it till i went out there that first time yeah so um, like there is some indigenous mounds from the the original people that inhabited Florida. And then later on, it was taken over by the Calusas. It's one of the only remaining serpent mounds that date back this old, uh, the 250 AD. Um, And they were actually dug up in the early uh, 1900s when they built that cemetery. They didn't know what they were and they dug them up to build the roads and scattered it all across the roads. Um, Yeah. So we feel that that, brings a lot of you know that's what creates some of the activity there that on top of being a cemetery and then plus on the uh, other side of the cemetery there's a mass burial from the hurricane in 1928 and uh, that's also a little disturbing Uh, basically if you were uh, if you weren't caucasian and you were working out there they they put you during that that hurricane that came through in the 20s 1928 they they kind of just put you in a mass mass grave there so yeah it's pretty pretty disturbing pretty spooky stuff you know um from from a scale to one to ten on on activity how active would you say that that ortona was for you oh i would say it's a 10 for sure i mean every time i've been out there there's always activity yeah it's it's wild Um, it really is a wild place I mean, there's activity like he's on diff- different sides of the cemetery, and even that little park uh, behind it. Woods, I've got an EVP um, there before too. Yeah, that in the um, the left, like as soon as you enter the cemetery on the left hand side over there, that's where the serpent mounds were, and that park behind it is Serpent Mound Park, and that, I feel that that whole park is is active. That was all part of the. Uh, the serpent mounds and, and uh, worshiping grounds and like a whole village, you know? And then, uh-huh. and like I said, it was originally from the, uh, the indigenous people. And then the Calusa tribe took it over and it was weird for the Calusas to be there um, because they're usually, you know, on the coast, you know, uh, Fort Myers area on your side, uh-huh. um, you know, on the West side of Florida, but they made their way out and, and they established, they found those older, that older village there and they they made streams and and little canals and stuff and and yeah it was pretty wild and they 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 stuck out there and stayed there so um i think you got you got a lot of stuff going on you know out there you know you get Absolutely. the whole mixture of a, of a regular cemetery you got the the serpent mounds you got the the calusas that were staying there you got the disturbed ancient burial grounds and then you also have like i said the the mass burials from it's that place is just like a perfect storm of of paranormal right yeah yeah 
that's one thing I find very interesting too is doing the investigations. You know, all the to learn all the history. Um, you know, I don't know that I would have ever learned that history without you know investigating that any place. You know, as a paranormal investigator. No, yeah, you're right. Me neither, right? Like you start, and and I found all these like different things like throughout different times I would go in there. Like I'd start doing a little research after, and then I found out you know about the 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 burial ground, and then you know another time then we're like, oh shit, there's a um, mass grave here too. You know, like it's so it's it is neat, you know, to get, to be able to see all the history and and everything that went on in that area. You know. Um, it's a very very cool spot that's for sure and is there anything else that you want to like add or talk about any of the experiences out in that way or or, or anything that uh that kind of stuck st stood out or or anything that you want to talk about um yeah that place is just so it's it's so amazing and has so much activity um i know one thing i think it has one of the is it charlie Bowlegs is out there. Billy um, Bowlegs, yeah. Billy Billy Bo Billy, Billy Bowlegs the third. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Um, and and he was a big part of the um Indian culture and uh Native American culture and everything. He was the third, so he wasn't the actual Billy Bowlegs that fought in the wars. He was uh, oh, okay. more um modern you know uh, at times and but he did a lot for the the uh, native american people like uh for the seminoles and different things but yeah he is out his his plot is there um see learn something new every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah no me too i'm always learning as well you know um so that's that's awesome but yeah no definitely and and um also so if anybody that's watching this and they want to check out some of Rich's stuff, Rich, where can people find you on, on uh, social media? I do have Instagram, um, but I put very little stuff on, onto YouTube or Instagram. I, I, I need this year. I was going to try to start putting up some, some clips and things. Um, so I definitely got to work on that here going forward. Yeah. But if but, they want to scope you out and where, where can yeah. they find you? So um, Skunk Ape Paranormal on Instagram. Um, it's the same on, on YouTube and then um, on Facebook as well. So Awesome, awesome. So, and if you guys are uh, want to follow any of my personal content, if you go over to my website, FLAParanormalResearcher.com, I have links out to all my stuff. And uh, make sure you check out Eric and I on the Haunted Files, and hopefully we'll get Rich out there on one of those episodes here soon. Absolutely. Uh, let's do it, man. Um, but no, we definitely appreciate you. Franny appreciates you. The whole team uh, appreciates you guys. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you.